the Rules Committee is Congressman Joseph Moakley, and he's gaveling into session, and we now take you there live. Mr. Chairman, can you wait a few, just a minute, uh, before we come to order, let us read the rule? Oh, I thought you had it. No. Okay. Bob, I know they gave you a great compliment for being on the floor when you didn't have to be, but you don't have to be here either. Okay. The uh, the chair will be in receipt of a motion, Mr. Derrick. Mr. Chairman, I move the committee grant HR two two six four a rule providing two hours of general debate, equally divided and controlled by the chairman and ranking minority member of the budget committee. All points of order against consideration of the bill are waived. The modifications. In part one of the report to accompany the rule will be considered as adopted in the House and in the Committee of the Whole. The rule waives all points of order against the bill as modified. No amendment is in order except the Kasich substitute printed in part two of the report, debatable for one hour, not subject to amendment. All points of order are waived against the substitute in the report. Finally, the rule provides one motion to recommit, which may not contain instructions. You've heard the motion of the gentleman from South Carolina, Mr. Solomon. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. Seems like only yesterday. We're on the same legislative day, are we? No. Yes, we are. Mr. Chairman, just uh, reading through the rule, we notice that there are a number of uh, self-executing provisions that are that are added to the uh, to the rule, uh, Mr. Chairman. I know that you've made an order, a, uh, a so-called Kasich substitute with one hour debate. Right. Uh, the, the real issues that were at stake uh, from both sides of the aisle, from the uh, uh, dozens of members that came up here and testified during this 13 hour, 14 hour rules meeting, uh, dealt primarily with the, uh, with the BTU tax that members from both sides of the aisle had testified they wanted uh, knocked out. Uh, the That's same. in the Kasich Amendment. Uh, well, that is not in the Kasich Amendment. It's uh, not when we're, we're dealing individually to have, uh, have offsetting uh, cuts, it, which is what the members came up and testified. We had members uh, from, uh, uh, we had some liberals, uh, Democrats, some conservative Democrats. But be that as it may, uh, a fair rule would have been to allow uh, Mr. Michael's uh, request to knock out the BTU tax, uh, Mr. Archer's request, and Mr. along with Mr. Goss to knock out the Social Security tax and replace it with, uh, with scored uh, uh, cuts in spending. Uh, none of those were allowed as individuals. Uh, secondly, uh, you've allowed just two hours of general debate on the issue of the entire budget for the uh, uh, that will set the, uh, the tone for spending uh, and the priorities for spending over the next five years. And uh, that just is not right, Mr. S Mr. Chairman. We would have uh, uh, gone along with three hours of general debate uh, based along uh, with, with maybe an hour on each, uh, each of the major amendments. And uh, uh, again, what we had hoped you would do was perhaps pick out uh, out of fairness to your side of the aisle, maybe five or six of the Democrat amendments that had uh, requested to be offered, 
uh, and then given us the choice of, uh, of the, which five we would like to offer, that would be the fair way to do this. As it is, we're going to go on the floor and we're going to uh, live up to uh, what all those editorials that we've been reading are saying, that uh, uh, the House is not allowed to work its will. That's wrong. And, uh, but uh, again, I'm not going to belabor the point at 2.30 in the morning. Uh, I do have before you an open rule plus substitute. And what that does call for is three hours of general debate, providing special consideration of designated amendments relating to uh, repealing the BTU energy tax, to uh, knocking out the Social Security tax, uh, putting in budget process reforms, waiving all points of order and requiring preprinting, and other amendments in the record. Other amendments subject to amendment under the five-minute rule with no waivers. The uh, Kasich substitute would be, as you are allowing it in your rule, would be allowed in our, our open rule and only uh, amendable by amendments previously adopted by the bill, if applicable. Uh, that is the, uh, the open rule that you have before us. That basically is what most of the people appearing before here today, including your members, would have preferred to see us have on the floor. So uh, um, I would uh, hope that you would consider that. And let's do it in the, in the democratic way, and let's have a reasonable debate on the floor tomorrow, uh, which would take no longer than five or six hours under this procedure. Would you, uh, Mr. Derrick? Uh, thank you. You know, I, it would be absurd to ask us to include 51 amendments in there. That uh, has never been done. We would be here for, for a month uh, dealing with all that. The Kasich Amendment incorporates, to a large degree, many of the amendments that were, came before the committee, and it certainly incorporates uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the Snow Michael Amendment. And, and you know, I feel that uh, the minority is getting a, a, a shot uh, with this a very broad and far-reaching amendment that, uh, and, and we'll have ours uh, with the basic bill. Mr. Uh, Chairman, Mr. I, uh, unless there's further comment, uh, I would move my, my motion. You've heard the motion of the gentleman from uh, New York. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. 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 The no's appear to have it. The motion of the gentleman from New York is not carried. Mr. Carried. Chairman, respectfully, a recorded vote. Uh, the clerk will call the roll. Mr. Derrick. No. Mr. Beelins. No. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Bonney. No. Mr. Hall. Mr. Wheat. No. Mr. Gordon. No. Ms. Slaughter? No. Mr. Solomon? Yes. Mr. Quillen? Mr. Dry? Aye. Mr. Goss? Aye. Mr. Chairman? No. Three members voted in the affirmative, eight in the negative. The motion, gentlemen from the York, does not carry. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I have another uh, motion before you, and it, uh, it uh, makes an order the Michael Snow Amendment relating to uh, uh, knocking out the BTU tax with uh, an equal dollar amount of offsets and spending cuts. It waives all points of order except the germaneness rule, uh, and it would be debatable for, uh, it should be for probably two hours, but uh, we limit it to one hour, uh, and hope that you will make that in order. That is, that is the amendment. Mr that people from both sides of your aisle have come up here. Mr. Bassler from Kentucky, a new freshman member, uh, a Democrat, uh, came up here and uh, argued uh, very, very eloquently uh, to have that amendment made in order with, with uh, uh, equal uh, offsets and spending cuts. Uh, that amendment deserves to be debated on the floor, and I would hope that you would make it in order. Uh, Mr. Dark, the uh, Michael Snow Amendment is incorporated uh, in the Kasich Amendment, so we feel that you really are, do have an opportunity to vote on that as incorporated in the Kasich Amendment. So you're not willing to give your members uh, the opportunity to debate that issue on the floor in a separate amendment? The, uh, our members as well as your members will have two broad concepts to deal with on the floor and will have an opportunity to vote accordingly. The gentleman sounds like a broken record, but that's all right. I move my amendment. Question comes on the gentleman from the York's amendment. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. The no's appear to have it. The motion is not adopted. Mm -hmm. 
recording. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Derrick? No. Mr. Bielinson? No. Mr. Frost? No. Mr. Bonnier? No. Mr. Hall? Mr. Wheat? No. Mr. Gordon? No. Mr. Slaughter? No. Mr. Solomon? Aye. Mr. Quillen? Mr. Dreyer? Aye. Mr. Goss? Aye. Mr. Chairman? No. On this matter, three members having voted in the affirmative, six in the <coughs> negative, eight in the negative, I'm sorry, the motion of the gentleman from New York is not adopted. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Solomon. I have a motion that you won't be able to resist. Now, this is one that... Uh, Try me. <laughs> <laughs> on behalf of all of the senior citizens that you represent in, uh, in Boston, uh, this, this motion would make in order a very legitimate amendment to repeal the tax increase that is proposed by President Clinton and the Democrats on Social Security benefits that the people have already paid a tax once on and probably in some cases even twice. Now, we had before us, we had, uh, I believe it was the gentleman from New York, Mr. Nadler, the uh, general lady from New York, uh, Mrs., uh, what was her name? Uh, Maloney. So Mrs. Maloney. Uh, and uh, we had the, uh, the socialist, uh, Bernie Saunders, uh, who was here. So we had a wide spectrum of people on your side of the aisle who wanted this amendment made in order. And uh, uh, they... <laughs> so on behalf of the socialists <laughs> and, uh, and my colleagues from New York City, uh, as well as 176 Republicans, we really want this amendment made in order, and I don't want to go through all the, uh, the many reasons. We all know it. But you really should make this amendment in order. You can do it, Mr. Chairman and my colleagues, uh, and I think you should. Mr. Derrick. You'll like it. Uh, do it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, of course, there is no additional tax. Uh, what uh, this amendment, uh, uh, or what the part of the program does, the very wealthiest of our retirees, will have a little more of their income included, but they will still pay less tax than the average person working on a shift in a mill in the country today. Isn't it, isn't it true that the... Isn't it true also that those people on Social Security now that don't pay taxes won't pay taxes? That's correct. Uh, anyone that... Uh, uh, a single, I think, uh, $25,000, uh, $32,000 for a family that's making uh, that will yeah. not pay it. Mr. Solomon, what, where would you get the offset for this? <laughs> the offsets were, uh, were, were laid out in the amendment that I laid, out, laid before you. It was a series of them. I don't have them here. It had to do, I think, with, uh, with a super collider, with a space station, with a uh, solid rocket motor. There were a whole series of them that, uh, that you have before you there. Uh, that particular amendment raised corporate tax, 1%. No, that was Mr. Bassler's. That was also Nadler's and Maloney's. Is that the same yeah, one you're talking This is about? Mr. Archer's. Mr. Mr. Archer's, okay. Yep. I'm going to offer Mr. Bassler's later on, which does have that increase in the, uh, so in the tax. Question comes on the motion of the general from New York. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. 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 The no's appear to have it. The motion is not adopted. The recorded vote. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Derrick. No. Mr. Bielinson. No. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Bonier. No. Mr. Hall. Mr. Wheat? No. Mr. Gordon? No. Ms. Slaughter? No. Mr. Solomon? Aye. Mr. Quillen? Mr. Dreyer? Aye. Mr. Goss? Aye. Mr. Chairman? No. In this matter, three members having voted in the affirmative, eight in the negative, the motion of the gentleman from New York is not adopted. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Goss. May I would like to move that we make in order the Goss Amendment, which deletes the BTU tax, deletes the Social Security tax, however it's characterized, and uh, provides for offsetting spending cuts uh, as testified to earlier today. And may I make, uh, for the record at this time, a statement uh, expressing my gratitude to Chairman Rostenkowski for uh, providing a rapid uh, answer to a question uh, which is not the question I asked, but nevertheless it was a rapid answer, and I appreciate that. Um, I, uh, I feel that we missed in the night. And the fact is that we have a lot to something like 10 million senior citizens who are going to participate uh, in this uh, extra revenue that is going to come uh, to the government. And that number will, in fact, through a variety of uh, reasons, climb to about 14 million over the next five years. 
Um, and uh, that was the, the question at issue, and uh, unfortunately, uh, we got the answer to a somewhat different question. I, I appreciate the effort, and I know way belittle it. But the fact is that uh, when the tax bills go out and the rules go out, if this comes to pass, everybody will call it by what it is, which is an additional tax on the senior citizens. There's no question that what is being proposed here is covered by necessary offset spending cuts, and I noticed that all points of order are waived, so we don't have any problem with any of those other matters that came up that I raised during um, my testimony. I, uh, I feel very strongly about this, because I think this is the gut issue, and I don't believe Kasich provides cover on this one. I believe this one deserves to stand on its own, so I, on its own, so I make that motion. The, um Mr. Derrick. Of course, the B2U tax will be dealt with on the Casey Amendment uh, that uh, was made in order by this committee. Social Security taxes are, to some degree, the same way. Not exactly the same way. I didn't say exactly. I said to the same degree. They're mentioned. I, I'll, I'll accede to that. Well, they are stripped from the bill in the, in the case of there, there are no taxes. That is correct. But he does, he does address uh, Medicare a lot differently than I do. Okay. Question comes on the motion of the gentleman from Florida. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. The no's appear to have it. Mr. Chairman, on that, I respectfully ask for a recorded Clerk vote. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Derrick? No. Mr. Bielinson? No. Mr. Frost? Mr. Bonnier? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hall. Mr. No, Wheat. No. no. Mr. Gordon. No. Ms. Slaughter. No. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Quillen. Mr. Dreyer. Aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Okay. Would you uh, call me again? Mr. Frost. No. <laughs> <laughs> On this matter, three members having voted in the affirmative, eight in the negative, the motion of the gentleman from Florida is not adopted. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Dreyer. Uh, I would like to propose that we consider uh, in block several amendments. I don't know if anyone would object to having these amendments considered in block. Is there objection from there? Well, what amendments are you talking about? Well, uh, they begin with the amendment uh, that was uh, outlined here by my distinguished colleague from Bakersfield, California, Mr. Thomas, who made the case that uh, indexation is something that was discussed in the campaign was included in the budget package, included in the uh, proposal that came forth from the administration, and uh, unfortunately was not incorporated in this measure. The second amendment is uh, the Kasich Amendment, which makes several budget process reforms. I don't have those. I'm sure we can get them from staff uh, here. The third amendment was the amendment uh, proposed by Mr. Klinger to clarify the uh, emergency designations under the Budget Enforcement Act. And the fourth amendment is the one that has uh, not uh, the sponsor that we have here, but its original sponsor, Mr. Walker here. I'm sure he's very interested in this amendment. It was proposed by Mr. McCandless to replace deficit reduction account with a public debt reduction trust fund under the Taxpayer Debt Buy-Down Act. And that was uh, legislation introduced originally by Mr. Walker, H.R. 429. And I hope very much, since he is sitting here watching this committee, Mr. Chairman, that we give his proposal a right to be heard on the House floor. And I move these four amendments. Mr. Derrick. Well, the basic bill, of course, calls for the largest uh, uh, tax deficit, increase? deficit reduction. Tax increase. Deficit reduction uh, that's ever been presented to this Congress in the history uh, of this Congress, the history of, of this government. And, of course, that is, is part of the package that would be disrupted by this in block amendment. So uh, I would have to suggest that we not go along with it. Well, if, if my friend is making that, if I could just inquire of him, does, does he have a response to this issue of indexation, how it was mentioned in the campaign, mentioned in the budget proposal that the president brought forward to us, and was basically ignored in the well, package uh, that the, came uh, from Ways the, and Means? Uh, the President Clinton has only been in office several months, and we will plan to get to that later. <laughs> well, no, no, but, I mean, it was included in his package on February 18th that was submitted to us here. I mean, it's, it's not as if this well, is an item that he says these, we're going to address this, down the road. When these packages are presented to the Congress, the Congress, is, Congress exercises its own jurisdiction, and it did. Uh, this is the way it came out. Mm -hmm. So without any debate, 
in the Ways and Means Committee, any consultation with members of the committee. As Mr. Thomas pointed out in his testimony, it was completely I'm sure there will be debate on this matter later in the year, but not at this time. Okay, well, uh, the reason I offer this is it's so that, that our, our president is concerned about it, many of the rest of us are, and I'm sure that it will be debated. Well, I know that my friend is sympathetic to the issue of indexation. I hope very much he'll be supportive of, of my motion to have it considered here on the floor. Mr. Chairman, Ms. Slaughter. That the issue of indexation is addressed now, that, that wasn't the way it was explained by Mr. Thomas here uh, when he came forward. Uh, it it's in there, but it's the uh, indexation is delayed till '95, but it's in the bill. It oh, it's delayed tomorrow. until 1995. It's delayed until 1995. But it's uh, in the bill. But the discussion, as it came forth during the campaign and in the I guess proposal. I the I, I'm, uh, I, I guess I didn't follow that piece of the discussion in the campaign, uh, but well, I can tell you that it's well, in the bill. It was, it's in the record of this well, committee's hearing today. It was submitted, the statements that were made in the okay. campaign, and I would recommend That's that my fine. friend I'm, from I'm New York friend. look up the record to see not what was submitted here. Day, the gentleman would yield. It's in there. It's just delayed. It's in there. It's, it's delayed. <laughs> that, that's, it's in there. You're both correct. Well, this puts you're it up front, correct. right? Right. I mean, this, this uh, brings it forward as Good. Mr. Thomas outlined today. Question comes in the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. 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 The no record vote, Mr. Chairman. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Derrick. No. Mr. Bielensen. No. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Bonney. No. Mr. Hall. Mr. Wheat. No. Mr. Gordon. No. Ms. Slaughter. No. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Quillen. Mr. Dreyer. Aye. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Three members having voted in the affirmative. Eight in the negative. The motion of the gentleman from California is not adopted. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Dreyer. I move that we uh, make an order the Porter Amendment, uh, which was outlined here. It's designed to repeal taxes if, the, uh, if deficit reduction does not occur under the new deficit reduction account that's been proposed. Mr. Derrick. Uh, but it will occur. So it's not necessary. T that's a guarantee that comes from my friend from South that's Carolina right. that it will occur. That's right. It seems to me that this is one way to guarantee that we'll have a response to well, put real teeth in this to make sure that it will occur. This is the first time that we have had deficit reduction presented to us by an administration that doesn't have a lot of smoke and mirrors on it one that we can count on. So therefore, it is not necessary that we have the portal. So in other words, there's no protection necessary that in here. You're well, protected I by having a reputable document to begin with. I have uh, proposed this amendment so that we can, uh, from our side, have the opportunity to ensure that what my friend from South Carolina wants and is promising will happen. This is the largest deficit reduction in the history of this country, and it will happen. And it's the largest tax increase in the history of the country, too, and we are very concerned about that. And I hope very much that we can make the Porter Amendment. You can count on the taxes. I don't know about the deficit reduction. That's the way it's worked in the past. Question. I yield back the balance. In the past, it was proposed by two uh, presidents uh, prior to Bill Clinton, and uh, their uh, projections didn't work out too well. Uh, uh, this president has now got another way of addressing it. And, uh, and I think that he's really looking to, to reduce the deficit. In fact, he's set up a deficit trust fund in order to put the, the savings in there to, uh, to take care and of the, the deficit. And the amendment which I've proposed here repeals the taxes if that, in fact, doesn't happen. But there's also another uh, uh, situation that rings in if, if the, uh, the caps are broached and uh, the OMB will be the, the media to uh, in which to inform the president if they are, and then there will be presidential action taken, a, a congressional action, under the w under the present bill. The action that I hope to see happen is a repeal of the taxes. Well, question comes in the motion. The gentleman from California. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. 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 The no's appear to have it. Vote, Mr. Chairman. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Derrick. No. Mr. Bielens. No. Mr. Frost? No. Mr. Bonnier? No. Mr. Hall? Mr. Lee? No. Mr. Gordon? No. Ms. Slaughter? No. Mr. Solomon? Aye. Mr. Quillen? Mr. Dreyer? Aye. Mr. Gossett? Aye. 
Mr. Chairman. No. Three members have been voted in the affirmative, eight in the negative. The motion, the gentleman from California, is not adopted. Sorry about that. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Goss. I move uh, that we make an order an on block amendment that would contain the following three amendments that we've had testimony on. They are numbers 12, 13, and 14 on the sheet we have referred to as the Kyle Amendment, which ratchets down federal spending to 19 percent of the GDP by fiscal year 96. The Geekus Amendment, which reduces the deficit to zero by the year 2000, setting deficit targets for each year. And the Smith of Texas Amendment to set aside 5 percent of salaries and expenses account each year over five years, which would be rescinded if Congress takes no action to restore or alter. I think we had testimony, and those are self-explanatory. And I would point out that this has been uh, portrayed uh, by the proponents of it as the largest deficit-cutting bill ever and those who are a little less certain as the largest tax bill ever. Uh, we know the taxes come first, and we're taking the deficit reduction more on faith. And the Kyle and Geekus Amendment particularly help us with that faith by giving us some targets. And I think those targets are very much in order in uh, the deficit, because uh, in the Geekus Amendment, we actually get down to uh, what uh, some of us would call a balanced budget uh, if we reduce the deficit to zero in a given year. And I think a target of the turn of the century is entirely appropriate. Uh, I don't believe that uh, as well-intentioned uh, as the administration's bill is on the subject of deficit reduction, uh, that it comes close to that target. Uh, but perhaps uh, Mr. Derrick would acquaint uh, me that I'm wrong. Well, uh, of Mr. course Derrick. you are. Uh, of course you are. And, uh, you in know, what uh, way? All of the, uh, we do have the largest deficit reduction bill, and of course we did deal with the cuts before we uh, uh, came along and, and dealt with the uh, increase in the taxes. And it all equals out over a five-year period, which at the end of that five years, the federal deficit as a percentage of the gross national product will be reduced by one half. So. Uh, having uh, this bill that has no smoke and mirrors in it, that is probably the most truthful document of that nature that has been presented to the Congress since I've been in Congress, uh, these uh, on block amendments are simply not necessary. Will I, the gentleman I, yield at the I, I, I will yield to my distinction in just a second. I just have to point out that these two are truthful amendments, and these two will improve a good bill and make it better. Because if we have the best deficit reduction bill ever before us in the Clinton administration, and we have amendments to improve it, then it's even better. And that is exactly what the Geekus Amendment does. It gets us down to no deficit at all in the year 2000. I yield to my friend well, from New York. My, it is my opinion that these do not improve the situation and um, are not necessary. I will yield to my friend from New York. <laughs> well, I thank the, uh, the gentleman for yielding and, uh, you know, the, you can talk about smoke and mirrors, but I'm looking at the Congressional Budget Office figures of uh, spending cuts in the years 94, 95, 96, 97, and 98. And these spending cuts that my good friend uh, Mr. Derrick uh, says add up to all this deficit reduction. Yeah, add up to $500 billion. I, uh, let me finish, if I may, and uh, I'll be glad to recognize you. Thank you. Uh, but uh, they add up to, according to the Congressional Budget Office, $151 billion. Now, the funny part about that is, this is a five-year projection. The $151 billion takes place over five years, and two-thirds of that falls in the fifth year. That's after Clinton. That's when a new president will be elected. So one-third of it, about $45 billion, comes in the other four years. So you talk about smoke and mirrors, uh, you know that this is not going to come to pass. This is but let me, Barry, no, no, Butler, I haven't recognized I beg you. you. I okay. beg you, Barry, you know, go let's, ahead. Let's be go polite. And, uh, I'm always We polite. have to be gentlemanly at all times. And uh, I don't need you to be telling me to be and, gentlemanly. And, and I need to be, uh, I need to remind myself well, of that on are. occasion as well. But uh, the fact remains that uh, the taxes are for sure. We know we'll get them, but we won't get the spending cuts and we won't get the deficit reduction. So I just wanted to point that out. And secondly, if uh, the gentleman forgot to include, I think, amendment number 12 by Mr. McMillan, uh, amendment number 11. You, I, I did not. I had left that to stand on its own. Oh, you, well, are you going to offer that? 
Uh, if there is no, if there is no objection uh, at this stage, uh, Mr. Chairman, you to want to amend your motion. I will amend my motion to include in the en bloc uh, Mr. McMillan's amendment, which relates to the entitlement caps, and he gave us some uh, very uh, straightforward testimony on that. Um, if there is no objection, I will include that en bloc. I think that'd be a good idea. No objection. You know, let, let me. And I am happy to yield to the gentleman from South Carolina. You know, let, let me just go back and and, and say that, that we do have the largest budget reduction in the history of this body that has been presented to it around $500 billion over a five-year period. We can argue about which comes when and what, but it is a legitimate proposal, as I'm sure you'll all agree. As far as to the, the uh, uh, amendment uh, the uh, relating to entitlement caps, as the gentleman Wells knows, that is taken care of in the, uh, in the room. That was the reason I was going to leave it out of the en bloc, but I am willing to include it in the en bloc in the interests of comity and moving I, forward. I am delighted that it is included in the rule. I think it's a, a very positive thing. Yeah. Okay. Question comes on the motion of the gentleman from Florida. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. no. No, the no's appear to have it. Mr. Chairman, I now respectfully ask Clerk the court will vote. call the roll. Mr. Derrick. No. Mr. Bielinson. No. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Bonner. No. Mr. Hall. Mr. Wheat. No. Mr. Gordon. No. Ms. Slaughter, Mr. Solomon, aye. Mr. Quillen, Mr. Dreyer, aye. Mr. Goss, aye. Mr. Chairman, no. On this matter, three members having voted in the affirmative, eight in the negative, the motion of the gentleman from Florida is not adopted. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, uh, if I might be recognized, if you all recall, uh, one of our members, Mr. McCrary of, uh, of Louisiana, who is a distinguished member of the uh, Ways and Means Committee, appeared before us and he, uh, he discussed the, uh, the problem uh, of job losses based on a retroactive tax proposal that appears in this reconciliation bill. It deals with uh, individual tax uh, increases and as well as corporate tax increases. And as you know, the reconciliation bill makes them effective retroactively to December 31st, 1992. And, uh, if you recall, at the time he was testifying, I was meeting outside with an uh, industrial leader from my district who was concerned about the BTU tax and, and also about this tax. And uh, he had proposed uh, in his uh, five-year, personal five-year plan to expand his business uh, and to take on 25 additional employees. Uh, he now, because of the BTU tax and because of this accelerated uh, retroactive tax on both income and corporate uh, tax proposals. Uh, he no longer is planning to do that. He's planning to not only not hire 25 new people, but uh, possibly have to lay off between 10 and 15 in order to continue the cash flow, which is which you all, I think, heard uh, Amo Houghton, one of the uh, uh, most successful businessmen in this country over the years and now a member of Congress, heard him uh, talk about on the floor just a little while ago. But I think this is a terribly, terribly important amendment uh, in order to, uh, and I think I heard somebody from your side of the aisle talk about, uh, they used the word trough, that the unemployment rate today was uh, that we were still in that trough of, uh, of high unemployment, that about the same as it was during the height of the recession. And the reason for that is a lack of voter confidence and, uh, and uh, confidence in the, in the economy. And this, more than anything else, uh, uh, leads to that. And really, uh, you know, if we're, it's bad enough that we're making it retroactive, it should never be anything but uh, prospective and down the road, not even effective the day it's adopted. But uh, uh, this would make it uh, effective the day it's adopted, which uh, I think is a reasonable compromise. And it deserves to be debated on the floor. And that's why I hope you make, uh, you at least give us your, your votes and, uh, and make this amendment in order. Mr. Derrick. I would uh, say to the gentleman that uh, your small businessman, the best thing that can happen to him will be for us to pass reconciliation tomorrow and get forward with reducing uh, the uh, budget deficit, with getting the economy back rolling again. And to do that, it's, it's very finely tuned. And uh, we, we must uh, keep it as it is, uh, just in good faith. Well, I would say that uh, the rating that the gentleman, Mr. Walker, sitting in the audience has in his hands there shows that uh, 
New York State is going to lose 60,000 jobs based on this reconciliation bill, and 1,080 of them are coming out of my congressional district. I don't call that getting the economy going. I move my amendment. Well, I will tell you this, that uh, most of those jobs were lost because of the shenanigans of the last 12 years. <laughs> Question comes from the motion of the gentleman from New York. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No, the no's appear to have the most is not adopted. Vote, please. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Derrick? No. Mr. Beans? No. Mr. Frost? No. Mr. Bonner? No. Mr. Hall? Mr. Wheat? No. Mr. Gordon? No. Ms. Slaughter? No. Mr. Solomon? Aye. Mr. Quillen? Mr. Dreyer? Aye. Mr. Goss? Aye. Mr. Chairman? No. On this matter, three members having voted in the affirmative. Eight in the negative, the motion of the gentleman from New York does not carry. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Dreyer. Uh, to uh, continue along the line of uh, small business concern, our freshman colleague from uh, Michigan, Joe Nolenberg, made a very compelling case as a small businessman who's just come to Congress to freeze the, uh, hold the income tax rate at 31 percent if they're uh, engaged in small business activity. And it seems to me that if, as Mr. Derrick has just said, uh, we want to do what we can to help the small business person, that this amendment being made in order would allow us to recognize, as Mr. Solomon has said a couple of times today and said down on the House floor, an overwhelming percentage, 75 percent, he said, of the new jobs created in this country come from the small business sector of our economy. And to see an increase of from 31 to 36 percent uh, for small business will clearly jeopardize the job-creating machine that the small business sector has there. So I move that we allow for the Nolenberg Amendment to be incorporated in our proposal. Mr. Derrick? I would say to the gentleman that uh, there are many uh, things in this bill that, that help small business. Uh, one is the uh, expensing allowances, the fact that the additional corporate income tax only applies to uh, uh, to large businesses and, and other things which I won't go into. So I think that uh, the bill that is the basic bill is, is very uh, helpful to small business. And I'm trying to help it even more by supporting the Nolenberg Amendment. Well, if you want to help it even more, the thing that you should do is to vote for the reconciliation package tomorrow so we can get along with deficit reduction to get the economy moving again. Mm. Question comes in the motion, General of California. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. 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 The appear to have it. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Derrick. No. Mr. Bielinson. No. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Bond. No. Mr. Hall. Mr. Wheat. No. Mr. Gordon. No. Ms. Slaughter. No. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Quillen. Mr. Dryer. Aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. On this matter, three members having voted in the affirmative, eight in the negative. The motion of the gentleman does not carry. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Goss. I respectfully request that we make in order the Houghton Amendment, also known as the Zoe Barrett Amendment, which I think we all understand is an amendment that tries to clean up those provisions of the problem we've run into trying to enforce collections in Social Security participation on a domestic help and situations like that by streamlining the efficiency of it and uh, by making it more practical and more realistic than the present law. I really can't imagine what the objection would be uh, to this amendment. Uh, it is not a cataclysmic amendment, as some of these others are. Uh, we've been told that uh, deficit reduction is going to magically appear tomorrow uh, if, uh, if we pass this thing and small businessmen are going to cheer all over the country. I suspect the small businessmen are going to feel the whip of the taxpayers, the taxman's lash a uh, lot before they're going to feel the uh, relief from any deficit reduction, but that remains to be seen. Uh, I don't think in either way that this amendment uh, uh, impinges on either of those arguments. It's just a good sense amendment. There's plenty of good testimony on this. I'm, I'm a little puzzled why this one wasn't made in order. Well, we do have uh, an amendment. We do have a, uh, the bill that, I know, I know you have one of that uh, uh, raises a threshold to $1,200. Yes, I know. And there are other, there are other numbers as well. Uh, right. we, we thought that this one uh, at least was worthy of debate so that those numbers could be debated because there is differing of opinion how much different riven revenue will come to our government uh, at the different levels. We know that there will be behavior uh, alterations here. Well, the debate was, was had in, in the uh, Committee of uh, Jurisdiction, and, and uh, the, they came up with a figure of $1,200, and that's what the committee... As I recall, the debate was not concluded. 
and that is why we were asked to make this amendment in order. I may be mistaken on that, but that's well, my recollection. Uh, I don't know if the debate was concluded or not, but I know that the 1,200 figure did come from that committee. In, in any event, it seems to me that it's worthwhile to debate, and uh, I make the uh, motion that we move it. Question comes to the motion, gentlemen from Florida. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. 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 The no's appear to have it. The motion is not adopted. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Chairman, I don't have any place have a recorded vote, respectfully. Sorry, I was a little late on that. No. Mr. Bielinson? No. Mr. Frost? No. Mr. Bonder? No. Mr. Hall? Mr. Wheat? No. Mr. Gordon? No. Ms. Slaughter? No. Mr. Solomon? Aye. Mr. Quillen? Mr. Dreyer? Aye. Mr. Doss? Aye. Mr. Chairman? No. Mr. Matter, three members having voted in the affirmative, eight in the negative, the motion of the gentleman from Florida was not adopted. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Dreyer. I would like to uh, once again ask the committee's indulgence. I'd like to ask permission to consider several amendments in block if no one would object. Thank you, Which Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm going to outline them if I may, but I mean, if you're going to object, I can consider them one by one if my friend would like. Uh, okay. You know, I, I, I don't. I don't think I'm going to object, but I'd just like to know what amendments you have right. in order before uh, okay. I give up my right to object. Okay. If you want to. Reserving the right. They're, they're, uh, the Camp Amendment, the Johnson of Connecticut Amendment, and the Torkelson Amendment. And I'm happy to go through and explain them for my friend if he'd like. The Camp Amendment. I think I understand them very well. If you. Uh, I don't quite understand them. Would you explain them to me? <laughs> I'm happy to provide a full explanation to my friend from Glens Falls. Uh, the Camp Amendment was to substitute immunization provisions which would focus on children and public welfare programs. And he and uh, <clears throat> two of our uh, Republican colleagues uh, testified here today uh, about this whole issue of immunization, trying to provide a greater incentive for uh, people to uh, move towards immunization rather than just claiming that there's going to be some great universal system which is going to be a panacea for the problem. Uh, the Johnson of Connecticut amendments uh, providing R&D tax credit for aerospace, elective to withhold federal taxes for unemployment compensation, permit states to opt for select Medicare programs, and exempt states and cities from the BTU tax. Uh, seems to be targeted towards uh, uh, those communities uh, which will be suffering. And Mr. Solomon made a very eloquent case on the, on the House floor a little while ago about the uh, about the problems that communities will face with, uh, with this tax and burden. So I hope we make that in order. And uh, the third is the Torkelson Amendment to lower the tax rate for individuals and in subchapter S corporations from 39.6% to uh, the corporate rate of 35%. I move that we make those three amendments in order so that we can at least have them considered on the House floor and have an open debate on them. Gentleman okay. from South Carolina, Mr. Derrick. Uh, as to the Camp Amendment, uh, the Camp Amendment, uh, my uh, figures uh, show would add $166 million to the deficit and would affect about 35 children uh, under Medicaid. 35,000. 35,000. 35, 35 children. 30, uh, uh, 35,000, I'm sorry. I, I misspoke. You're uh, as to the uh, Johnson uh, uh, Connecticut uh, amendments, as to the uh, first part of it, there would be a small addition to the deficit. As to B, there would be a $9.5 billion addition to the deficit over five years. And uh, as to uh, the uh, C part, there would be a small in increase in receipts. As to the next uh, amendment and the last amendment on block, it would uh, really have no effect, but it would be a very complex burden for the taxpayer and would be really very difficult to administer. For that reason, to reduce I that tax from 39.6 percent uh, to 35 percent, it seems I, to me to be I simpler. Suggest that we are <clears throat> not, uh, pass those. Mr. Chairman, uh, it, it seems to me that uh, my friend has made uh, his case very eloquently, and it would be in order for us to carry his debate down to the floor of the House and at least debate this. And I'd be happy to yield to my friend from New York at this time. No, I was just going to say all three of the amendments <clears throat> certainly are worthy of, of debate on the floor, but. Uh, just um, as far as Mr. Torkelson is concerned, you know, he really has uh, uh, come up with a lot of good ideas. He's a new freshman Republican member from Boston, and uh, uh, I think he's going to be an outstanding member of this House, and uh, I sure like his ideas. I particularly like this one. This would create jobs. This is a jobs amendment, mm -hmm. so I support it. Terrific. Well, well I, would just I hope you'll support my motion here then, Mr. Mr. Solomon. I think I will. <laughs> Thank you. As I suggested, it would be a substantial uh, addition to the deficit, and I would move that we not pass. 
The question comes on the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. The Record no's vote. appear to have it. Clerk will call the roll. No. What? No. <laughs> Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Bonner. No. Mr. Hall. Mr. Wheat. No. Mr. Gordon. No. Ms. Slaughter. No. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Quillen. Yes. Mr. Dreyer. Aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Three members having voted in the affirmative, eight in the negative, the motion of the gentleman is not adopted. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Goss. I move that we make in order the Gingrich amendments, uh, number 21 on the sheet. Uh, they come in uh, three areas that they were explained in testimony before our committee today, uh, or at least earlier uh, today. I guess it was still today. Yeah. To increase the amount of creditable wages under targeted jobs tax credit for a maximum uh, from 3000 to 3500 to expand the age of affected youth in the program from 16, 17 year olds to 14 and 21 year olds. And I really have a hard time understanding why we wouldn't be able to do that when we've just redefined teenager to be 30 years old in a vote on the House floor this evening. Uh, the second area would be to eliminate the marriage penalty in the income tax that exists now. There's a disincentive to be married, as you know, in terms of dollars. And uh, the same um, phenomenon exists in Social Security benefits. There is a disincentive uh, for marriage. This, uh, these amendments, they, they package out to be people-friendly and family-friendly. Uh, I don't believe uh, that they have the um, negative consequences of dollars uh, that are significant uh, in terms of the deficit. Uh, they don't get into the uh, BTU uh, tax question. They don't get, which I know you wish to avoid, and I, I um, don't think they get into, except in, in, in an obvious way, uh, in the Social Security area, into the Social Security tax area. So uh, I think this is something that makes uh, life a little better for people and truly really would fall in an area of government providing good services in a reasonable way. Uh, and I therefore make that amendment. Mr. Durrett. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, d I would not consider these as people-friendly amendments. Uh, what I would uh, say that they would be very unfriendly uh, to uh, the children uh, of people because they would end up having to pay off large additional amounts in the deficit. The A part adds $100 million <coughs> to the deficit over five years. The B part of the Gingrich Amendment adds $35 billion to the deficit over five years, and the C part adds $5 billion to the deficit over five years, totaling uh, $40 billion uh, plus another $100 million. Uh, Where do those so I, I don't from? consider that as being uh, people friendly. Yeah, I, I, I have to consider that as being people friendly. I say it very unfriendly <laughs> to my children and my grandchildren. Well, I'll, I'll put it this way. Uh, the amendments are made as people-friendly amendments and family-friendly amendments, and I think they are. And the question of how to pay for them uh, beyond the uh, provisions that we've talked about with taxation uh, is quite obviously go to the area of cuts. And unfortunately, we have been shut out uh, of some of the cuts that we've recommended. In fact, there's 104 billion of cuts, which I think are very, very defensible and very wise in my amendment, which has regrettably been turned down. Uh, which I am sure that uh, Mr. Gingrich would be very happy to uh, help us with uh, to pay for some of these figures if, in fact, those figures you cite are, cor are the correct ones. In any event, I move the question. The question comes on the uh, amendment from the gentleman from Florida. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Aye. No. The no's appear to have it. The Mr. Chairman, I'm not going to ask for a quarter vote. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Garrett. No. Mr. Bielenson. No. Mr. Frost? No. Mr. Bonnier? No. Mr. Hall? Mr. Wheat? No. Mr. Gordon? No. Ms. Slaughter? Mr. Solomon? Aye. Mr. Quillen? Mr. Dreyer? Aye. Mr. Doss? Aye. Mr. Chairman? No. On this matter, three members having voted in the affirmative, eight in the negative, the motion of the gentleman from Florida is not adopted. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Dreyer? I would like to uh, once again ask the indulgence of uh, my colleagues to consider five amendments in block. I'm expanding. I only had three in the last proposal, but five amendments in block. And without objection, I'd like to consider them in block. And I'm happy for my friend from South Carolina to go through all of those amendments at this time. Uh,
the First Amendment was proposed by, uh, and, and again, all I'm asking is that these amendments be made available for consideration on the House floor uh, so that all of our colleagues can have a chance to debate them. The first is the amendment offered by a freshman uh, Republican colleague, Nick Smith of Michigan, an amendment to index depreciable equipment for inflation, repeal the onerous sections of, minimum, of the minimum tax, and to reduce earlier depreciation deductions, basically designed to encourage the private sector of the economy to expand. The second amendment was provided to us by uh, another freshman member, Mr. Collins of Georgia, who I think has a very good solution to one of the real problems that we have, education, which we're often talking about in this committee. And uh, his proposal is an amendment to mandate a loss of benefits to a family if the children of those recipients drop out of school. As a minority member of the state legislature in Georgia, he successfully implemented this amendment in that state, and he's saying that we ought to consider that. It's an innovative idea, and it will get at this problem of, uh, of dropouts in school. Uh, the third amendment is the uh, Roth Amendment to eliminate the Social Security tax with no offsets. We've discussed that issue here earlier. We know how onerous this burden is. It's going to be imposed on retirees. And the fourth amendment is the uh, Allard Amendment to cap the irrigation tax. And the Fifth Amendment is the Cox package of amendments on budget process reform. Uh, first, fix some appropriations for entitlements. Second, they require joint budget resolutions. And third, prohibit baseline budgeting. These are five very innovative proposals. We've heard testimony on them here. And all I'm asking, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chairman, is that we allow our colleagues on the House floor to debate these proposals rather than preempting their right to even consider them. And I'm happy to yield at this time to my friend from South Carolina. Uh, Mr. Derrick. Uh, I, th I thank the Chairman. As to the Smith Amendment, uh, it raises uh, about $2.6 billion up until 1998. But over the next 10 years, it would add to the deficit over $80 billion. Now, it seems to me that if we have... I said over 10 years. Over a 10-year period? I said 8.2 annually and 80 no, billion over 10 years. No, no. $80 billion. Yes. So if we have an expanding, way. growing no. economy oh, I'm sorry. in sorry. which these, no, I these businesses have taken advantage of this, we're going to see an increase in the deficit rather than an increase in revenues to the we're Treasury? We're going to see an increase in the deficit after 1998. I, I don't know where these uh, figures the come from. the next 10 years of $80 billion. That's that well, our children and our very, grandchildren will have to pay off. I am very skeptical of those uh, figures. Well, I, now, if you would uh, let me uh, finish my, you uh, asked me to go on down. I've uh, happy to sat further. by very quietly and attentively when you uh, uh, gave your proposition. Uh, as to the Collins of Georgia Amendment, uh, as to uh, mandate the loss of benefits if children of recipients drop out of school, you know, that's a state matter. That's a local matter. I, I, we, we don't need to be doing that. And, and Do the we octopus, not provide federal let the welfare octopus, benefits? Let, letting the octopus of the federal government come down upon the, uh, the children of... Well, as we uh, provide uh, the benefits uh, Mr. with U.S. Uh, oh, I was just I responding your to your pardon. One. If you would please let me uh, uh, finish. Okay. Uh, well, let's all know, be I gentlemanly here. Well, I, uh, you know, I uh, just, you know... Uh, You'll have your time, and you've already had it, and you'll have it again. All right. Thank you. Uh, the, uh, the Roth Amendment to eliminate the Social Security tax with no offsets increases the deficit by $32 billion over the next five years. $32 billion over the Don't next uh, five <laughs> years. Now, you also included in that, I believe, the Allard uh, uh, Amendment. Yes. yes, I did, the Allard the Amendment, to cap the irrigation surtax. Sur uh, we can't figure out what that it's does. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you'd listened to the testimony of Mr. The, uh, Allard, you would have known. Uh, I wasn't but, there for uh, it either. But let me, let me see now. Now, $80 billion plus uh, 100 uh, plus 32 the best I can figure, that over the next uh, 10 years, that would be about $150 billion dollars that you would add uh, to the deficit that our children would have to pay off. Would, would the gentleman yield? I, I'd be delighted to yield. I thank my friend. Uh, if, in fact, the $150 billion figure that my friend has used is correct as far as the, the, the deficit, well, I have uh, and I'm very, I am very skeptical about these projections and these figures, as has often been the case in the past, it seems to me that the entire $150 billion will be offset 
if the Fifth Amendment, which I have in my M-Block package, that the budget process reform, as outlined here by Mr. Cox, is implemented, I'm convinced that that $150 billion will be zip, zero, nada. Well, and I move my uh, amendment, Mr. Chairman. These are tax expenditures by cuts in entitlements. I mean, that's absurd to think that, uh, that it's going to offset that. My goodness sakes. I mean, where, the where? budget process reforms that I we mean, propose to implement, if Mr. Cox's amendments are uh, passed on the House floor, uh, will, I'm convinced, totally address the concerns that have been raised by my friends. So it seems to me that allowing for debate on all five of these amendments would be a very wise move for this Rules Committee to, to well, make. I would suggest that we go ahead uh, with your motion and, and we vote it down, that we not put an additional $150 billion before we do, my I'd, children and grandchildren. Before we do, I'd like to yield to my friend from Glens Falls. Well, as uh, a member of this Congress, which has five children and two grandchildren, um, I just want to comment. I know that you would not want to do that. Well, I want, to, I want to comment on the Collins of Georgia memo because, I, uh, Derek I, uh, Butler, I don't know whether it was you or <laughs> someone else that uh, uh, said something about uh, how this would not help children. But uh, the truth of the matter is what the Collins of Georgia I mean, This is Mac Collins, a new member from Georgia, right. Republican, who, uh, who really has had some great ideas. He, when he was in the minority, a Republican minority member of the Georgia legislature, had the Democrats accept his amendment that does this very thing in the state of Georgia. Somebody said this was a state issue. Well, it's not a state issue. It's a federal issue. It's federal tax dollars. And I hear all these members of Congress running around here saying we have to throw more money at education, more money at education. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't have to throw any more money to education. What we need is discipline in the schools and discipline in the homes. And one way you get discipline in the schools and discipline in the homes is with this uh, uh, Collins of Georgia's amendment, which says that if, uh, if you lose benefits, if your children drop out of school, and by golly, the parents say, you get yourself to school and you stay there, and it improved their education. Now, if that isn't an incentive, I don't know what is. So I, uh, I hope that, the, that we make that amendment order. I'd love to debate it on the floor against all these people that are saying, throw more money. At everything. I thank my friend well, for his contribution, um, and all we're asking is that we have a chance to debate this on the floor, the and I move the, the question. You, you know, with the gentleman yield. Sure. I don't uh, have the time. Happy yield. You know, I'm, I'm delighted that Mr. Collins passed this in the Georgia State Legislature because that's exactly where it belongs. Mm -hmm. You know, we do not want the octopus of the federal government to be reaching down and giving children power over their parents. Giving children power yeah. over their Would parents. The uh, yield? I'm happy to yield to my I friend. I can't believe that my friend, Mr. Derrick, does not support President Clinton's welfare reforms. Well, you know, which is, which is a federal issue, and, it, and he's sitting here talking against them. Welfare reforms. Let me give you an example. One of the top priorities in the campaign yeah. last fall. Yeah. Let me. It seems to me this is a very meaningful. If the gentleman would yield, happy to further yield to my friend. You know, it's a question of sometimes uh, the federal government does know best on on very rare occasion, but you know. Uh, I followed very closely. Mr. Walker, sitting out in the audience and myself, have introduced uh, dozens of legislation uh, dealing with, uh, with uh, drug use in the, uh, in the, in the Capitol, uh, in the Congress, and random drug testing. And we've been successful in getting a lot of these through. One I got through two years ago said to all of the states that if you don't enact legislation that repeals the, dr the, the driver's licenses, of all convicted drug felons, you're going to lose starting off 2% of your federal aid to your highways, and then 4%, and then 6%, and then 10%. And guess what? States all over the country are doing what New Jersey did. When New Jersey, in the first year they had this law in effect, they repealed, they revoked the driver's licenses of over 10,000 druggies running up and down the highways killing people. And you know what? Even New York State. My own liberal state just had the New York State Senate pass the Solomon Amendment, and we're going to get that enacted into law, or we're going to take away that highway aid in New York State and in New Jersey and in Massachusetts and all over this country if they don't enact it. So nothing wrong with the, with the Collins of Georgia Amendment. Let's enact it. Let's take it on the floor and debate it. I gentleman, thank my friend for his support of my amendment. At this time, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to yield to the newest member of this committee, Mr. my dear friend from let Florida, just, Mr. Goss. Let me just simply say that I am absolutely amazed. I yield it to you that Mr. Solomon wants to put the education of our children in the hands of the federal government. 
I never thought I would hear such as that from him. And I don't think go. that's quite what this that. amendment does. I, I, I think that's really an extrapolation of this amendment, which goes you way beyond the scope of it, the well. way I've interpreted it here. All right. I, let's, uh, All right. I'd like to yield to Mr. Goss. Uh, Mr. Goss. I just wanted to make sure I understood something here. It's late, and I may have missed something. I'm not sure exactly what, but it was about this octopus of uh, federal government <laughs> that uh, has crept in on us here. Uh, do I understand the distinguished gentleman from South Carolina to suggest that the benefits that are flowing to these children are part of the octopus? Uh, this, we're not talking about benefits. We're no, we weren't talking about, about the benefits. We're talking about controlling families, controlling children, educating children, and letting the federal government that sits in Washington tell kids out in your state uh, and parents what they can do with their children and how they can educate them. So we just throw the money out there and then we lose control of it and uh, is that how it works? Education of our children is a local and state matter. It always has been and it should always be so. Well, if we yeah. remove the federal dollars, then we wouldn't have any octopus to worry about. Well, the federal dollars are there for equalization, generally, of educational opportunities throughout that country, but this country. But it does not take the basic responsibility for the education of our children away from local and state government. I don't think we're trying to do that with this amendment. Well, I the think case has been made here very clearly, Mr. Chairman, that this should be debated on the House floor, and that's all I'm asking for. Question Let's comes on the motion. Board. Reasonable request. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. The no. no's appear to have the motion not adopted. Record vote, Mr. Clerk Chairman. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Derrick. No. Mr. Beanson. No. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Bonnier. No. Mr. Hall. Mr. Wheat. No. Mr. Gordon. No. Ms. Slaughter. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Quillen. Mr. Dreyer. Aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Three members have been voting in the affirmative. Eight in the negative with the motion of the gentleman is not adopted. Mr. Chairman, what time is it? 3.16. In the morning? <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, you know, we've been, you know, having a little comedy here and, uh, and sort of enjoying each other's com com company at uh, 3.15 in the morning. You think it's time to go home, huh? Well, it's just that uh, I'm becoming, really, I am becoming concern because even though we're being jovial and, and friendly, what has just taken place over the last uh, about 10 or 12 roll calls is, uh, is a party line vote rejecting all Republican amendments. Uh, that means that, that we have been effectively gagged. Uh, you've gagged 120 million Americans across this country. We get That's how many? We 176 Republicans. The Kasich Republicans. amendment is a Republican substitute. Uh, that in that it incorporates uh, many of these uh, amendments that you put that forward was not, today. That's not an amendment that I just offered, Mr. Would the Chairman. gentleman yield? No, I won't at this point because I'm about, I will in a minute. But uh, sure. um, since you have seen fit to gag uh, all of us Republicans, uh, and I'm serious about that when I say that, uh, I hope you aren't going to gag two Democrats because now I'm going to offer two Democrat amendments that came before this body. They were very sincere. One was Mr. Bassler of... Uh, Basler. Basler from Kentucky, was he? Uh, young, young fellow, a new member, uh, a Democrat, freshman. And uh, he, had, he, he gave an eloquent speech about how the BTU tax would affect the people in Kentucky, particularly in his district. And he came in with some very, very reasonable requests uh, to repeal that tax and offset it with, uh, I think, uh, Louise, you mentioned one, he wanted to raise the corporate tax back up to 36%, which is what President Clinton had requested. That was the only tax increase that he asked for. The rest of it was offsets for spending cuts, and he talked about the superconducting uh, super collider. He talked about the aerospace, the, uh, the space station. He talked about the, uh, uh, the uh, what was it? I forget what the, well, anyway, it was a series of, uh, of very legitimate cuts. Uh, he deserves the right to offer that amendment. He represents 580,000 people in the state of Kentucky, uh, just like I do in New York. And uh, even though you have uh, effectively gagged uh, all of us uh, Republicans, uh, you ought to see fit to make your Democrat colleagues amendment in order. And uh, I would so move that, that uh, amendment. Just so we can not be allowed to play any favorites here. 
you want to spend one as well? No. Well, uh, Mr. Derrick. Just to, uh, to explain to you, Mr. Solomon, that we are not playing favorites, uh, Democrat versus Republican. I will have to suggest that we oppose uh, this uh, amendment offered by a Democrat who, as you stated, is a very eloquent uh, uh, new member of this body. However, we have incorporated, uh, or you have incorporated into the Kasich Amendment, the BTU uh, tax with uh, many of the offsetting, offset spending cuts, and also the matter of the entitlement caps. The entitlement cap isn't in. All right. I think that's yeah. in the next one. Okay. That's another distinguished Democrat. But, it, but in, in, in any event, uh, this is basically incorporated in the Kasich Amendment, which is, it was our understanding, was the lead Republican amendment and the broadest and more closely represented the general views of the Republicans at large. Well, you know, in response to that, uh, Mr. Chairman, I had uh, mentioned during the course of this 15-hour hearing that we've held today uh, several editorials that have appeared across the country. And I think uh, this attitude of gag them all uh, can be best uh, spoken to by, by just uh, reading an ex excerpt from Mary McGrory's uh, Washington Post column. Uh, what happened to Maggie McGrory? Uh, Maggie, uh, uh, Maggie, I mean. Uh, no, it's Mary. But you call her Maggie all day. I was calling her Maggie all day. Well, <laughs> she, she and I don't get along too well anyway. She's she a very usually, lovely lady. <laughs> Very lovely lady. I usually don't agree with anything she writes. Uh, but uh, this is the one she wrote that said a week of Clintonian lapses. And, uh, you know, it's the one that says, how does the comeback kid come back from the week of hell? And, it, and then she was talking about uh, in her column, it was last week during which he had a $200 haircut while the motors ran on Air Force One and other patrons of the Los Angeles Airport circled above and for reasons unclear fired the entire staff of the White House Travel Office. But the point I wanted to get to was a statement by Tim Penny, that she, uh, which is a very distinguished Democrat on your side of the aisle, uh, Tim Penny. Yeah, who is not which is? <laughs> what? Well, I'll, I'll apologize for your interrupting me. Uh, but, but, but it goes on to say, and, it, and it's not funny. <laughs> You're the only one that's laughing. <laughs> well, would you read this? Uh, this <laughs> The gentleman yield? Yes. I yielded my vote for California. On behalf of Mr. Solomon, I'd like to read uh, a quote from uh, Tim Penny, one of several Democrats who are giving Clinton a hard time on his budget. Quote, it's the arrogance of power. Close the rules, cut off debate, limit the options, and do it on our terms, he says, of the populist administration. I'd like to yield back um, to my friend. On behalf of Tim Penny, I'd like to move my amendment based on that statement. And, and submit this for the record, if I may. Without objection. Thank you. Question comes on the motion. The gentleman from New York. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. 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 The no's appear to have the motion not adopted. Record vote. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Derrick. No. Mr. Bielens. No. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Bond. No. Mr. Hall. Mr. Wheat. No. Mr. Gordon. No. Ms. Long. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Quillen. Mr. Dreyer. Aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. On this matter, three members having voted in the affirmative, eight in the negative, the motion general from the NARC is not adopted. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, uh, earlier today, uh, when we originally opened up the, uh, the, the second part of this hearing uh, to vote on these various amendments, I had intended to, uh, to raise a point of order against the, uh, <coughs> the Spratt uh, legislation that is being uh, uh, incorporated into this, this budget, uh, which deals with uh, spending control mechanisms, and I did so on the basis of a letter that I had. Would you pass that down to the lady there? <laughs> I did so because uh, this committee has jurisdiction over this kind of legislation, including the amendment that I'm offering now for Mr. Stenholm that establishes entitlement caps and enforcement mechanisms for uh, acting on overruns. And uh, that legislation has not been uh, uh, brought before this committee. Uh, we are the Committee of Jurisdiction, and uh, I chose not to make the point of order 
uh, hoping that uh, you would uh, agree to hold a public hearing on the Stenholm measure and uh, yeah. several other measures that we have. And uh, uh, I'd like to hear the, so. the, since the chairman hasn't answered my letter yet, uh, I would just like to ask, do you intend to hold hearings on the, on the Rules Committee since we do have jurisdiction on, on this very important issue? Well, on the Stenholm uh, enforcement, as you know, the, the Spratt legislation waters down the, the uh, Stenholm enforcement procedures. In other words, Stenholm had a hammer in there, and this is nothing more than a rubber mallet at best. So uh, I'd just like to know your feelings well, on it. I think it might come under your jurisdiction. Yeah, uh, well, I, I think it uh, does come under my jurisdiction. Let, let me uh, first say this, that uh, Mr. Stenholm is a full supporter of the uh, way we deal with the caps uh, in the on entitlement uh, in and in, in I in the um, in the rule as, as yeah. part of the bill. And uh, you know if if it if it looks like we want to have some hearings on something that, that that does it further, I'll certainly be glad to talk to you about it. And you know I've always been willing right. to have hearings when when you wanted to have. No, them. you have been cooperative, and Mr. McMillan, you know, has has uh, legislation in the form of uh, I think resolution. Would, yeah, I would have no objection to, to having hearings on it. But mm -hmm. uh, but as far as the entitlement caps uh, at at this particular point, Mr. Stenholm has agreed, and Mr. Spratt and others uh, concerned on the entitlement caps. Well, General <coughs> Neoc knows that the Rules Committee has limited jurisdiction over the enforcement that government offices right. had it. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, when you're talking about uh, jamming something through, I, uh, I was, it was about a week or ten days ago that uh, uh, your majority leader, minority leader rather, Newt Gingrich was someplace and he said if we were in the leadership there are times that we'd have to jam things through when it's a real party policy. And, uh, Newt uh, said that? Newt said that. Mm. And, uh, and uh, he was right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, well, it's not unusual when, when you have the president's uh, uh, bill before you that uh, the, the, the party of the president uh, does all it can to expedite the procedures and, and right. make sure that the policy is intact in his uh, message. Well, I, I don't know about that statement. With the I, gentleman, I, I, I with the gentleman I'd be glad to you. And, and I would like to also say that we are giving you a very broad substitute, which is more than you gave us in 1981. Oh, now. It's more than you <laughs> gave us in 1981 under Ronald Reagan. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chair, I'm not going to get into that. Uh, we, with this, we could talk about that for an hour, but uh, let me, uh, on behalf of Mr. Stenholm and his hammer, let me, let me move his, his uh, amendment, which does establish entitlement caps and really tough enforcement mechanisms for acting on all of these overruns on, on uh, entitlement programs. And I would move that resolution. That, that uh, question comes in the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. 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 The no's appear to have it. The Three motion's not adopted. Vote, please. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Jarrett. No. Mr. Dion. No. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Bonnier. No. Mr. Hall. Mr. Wheat. No. Mr. Gordon. No. Ms. Slaughter. No. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Quillen. Mr. Dreyer. Uh, aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. On this matter, three members having voted in the affirmative. Eight in the negative the motion. The gentleman, Mr. Chairman, New York is not adopted. I have an amendment. To Mr. Oh, Solomon, one more to go if you wish. Well, we just wanted to ask, uh, Mr. Goss and I have been uh, discussing here this uh, report that came out, and there are several self-enacting, self-executing provisions in this rule, and we didn't know if 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 they related to testimony that we had heard uh, in our uh, marathon 36 hours of hearings today, uh, or if. Uh, if there are items that could be explained to us um, in some way, and I'd like to yield to Mr. Goss. Thank you. I was, I will say that uh, it's caught my attention a little bit. I thought I paid attention. I wasn't in the room all the day, to be sure, but I don't remember hearing about certain peanut products or optically imaged documents or uh, enforcement of continued coverage of pediatric vaccine or treatment of uh, technical revisions in the Ag Committee or the Armed Services Committee modifications relating to military pay. Now, I may have heard of all of those things. Uh, they may have gone through in, uh, in a mass of material, or they may have uh, slipped by uh, unknown, uh, but I... Mr. Goss, uh, most of them are technical amendments and jurisdictional amendments that would, were asked uh, to be made by chairmen of the respective committees, and each person has a, a, a letter in their file on that. Were, were these and the correspondence is 
with these, each member's file. Mr. Chairman, were these coordinated with the ranking minority members of those committees too, or just done simply by the chairman? There's, there's a combination. I guess some of them were and some of them weren't, but there were letters from the chairman that we usually get on every bill or uh, any bill that they're interested in, in, in matters of jurisdiction and strictly purely technical amendments. It just seems to me that the ranking minority member would want to address, you know, a purely technical matter, and I'm, I'm just concerned that a number of them may not have been cleared by the minority uh, before they were included in this self-executing -exec provision. Well, all I say is we get the same letter from chairman when they, when they, asking for a, 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 to be protected in jurisdiction, and, and this, these letters were the same type. Okay. Mr. Chairman, um, I noted the uh, the last five words of the uh, of the rule that we have before us states uh, quote, which may not include instructions, and uh, I would move that we strike the last five words uh, quote, which may not include instructions uh, from the bill. From Mr. The bill. Derek, well, uh, you know we uh, talked about that in caucus and uh, felt that when we made the case of amendment and all of that it was very broadly drawn and, and covered uh, just about all the things that were brought up before the committee, or certainly many of the more substantial things. And uh, we felt that uh, that you were protected by that and it was not necessary to have that motion to read. Well, I, I just have to tell you, Mr. Chairman, that um, I'm really disappointed that uh, we are not able to have a, a really meaningful debate on the floor of this House uh, tomorrow. Uh, we're going to have, at most, three hours to debate the entire five-year budget uh, facing this country. We're going through a, a whole change of things as far as the defense budget is concerned, uh, as far as uh, health and welfare is concerned. Uh, uh, just uh, the entire budget is almost new to over 25 percent of the members of this body and to, to uh, expect us to, uh, to go to the floor and uh, debate it and let the American people know what is in this document here, which consists of thousands of pages, just uh, is not reasonable. Would, you would all it, know it, and uh, would the, would the gentleman, gentleman you? Yes, I'd be You know, the, uh, we spent, I, I've forgotten how many hours on the floor on, on the budget uh, resolution, which uh, was inclusive of, of most of this thing. To say that the members are not familiar with it, I think is not exactly correct. Uh, and the various committees of this House, uh, have, have considered it. We're going to have a uh, three hours of debate on, on the floor tomorrow. Uh, we've all been talking about it for uh, the last couple of months on, on an individual basis. And to say that the members are not familiar with it, I, uh, I question that that is being the case. Well, I, did, I just have to say I remember the Graham ladder thing in 1981. It was put on our desk a half an hour before we uh, voted on it. Gentlemen, well, you people were in power then, and I don't understand why that was. Because no, no, you, you, you defeated the rule. You, you had to get over. the one who did that. Well, and I understand there were two substitutes. Let me tell you, my friend, time. if I had been the Speaker of the House, it would have been laid out there in plenty of time, no matter what uh, rule was defeated. There were two, there were one two of these substitutes, days you may discover that. There were two substitutes, and they were both Republican. Uh -huh. well, well, will the gentleman yield? I'd be glad to yield to my friend. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to get back to, to this issue that Mr. Goss and I were discussing that does concern us, the, these self-executing provisions. I mean, once again, we have items in here that you've said are technical in nature, but, you know, as I read this uh, strike section 1109 in agriculture title relating to customs treatment of certain peanut products. Now, I spend a lot of time dealing with trade issues, and I, and, uh, I it, it seems to me that, that customs treatment of a certain agricultural item would go beyond simply a technical provision. Well, w w th that's a jurisdictional provision. The Agriculture Committee had it in their bill, and it's a matter for ways and means. Mm -hmm. We, str we str just struck it with the bill. But, Mr. Chairman, this is something our friend from California would like. Apparently, the Agriculture Committee, without jurisdiction, put in some kind of a tariff on peanuts. Ways and Means Committee objected, and so we're taking it out. So they're it clearly was it. outside yeah. their jurisdiction. Well, based on that's a great explanation. I'm very pleased because the diminution of barriers continues to be a goal of mine. Well, I'm, I'm glad you brought it up. Th and, and thank you for the very clear explanation. I thank my California colleague for explaining it to me clearly. Well, I thought I explained it to you clearly. Not as clearly as Tony did. 
The uh, gentleman in New York yield further. Just, if the gentleman has the time. I have a motion pending, but I'd be glad to yield to my colleague. Thank you. I, I was on your motion uh, with regard to the time. You know, if this is going to be the biggest budget deficit ever, it seems to me we ought to be talking about it for more than a couple of hours when everybody is going to be looking at the clock trying to get an airplane to get out of here. There's a couple of things I don't think we have talked much about. I think this retroactive aspect of, of this tax uh, is is going to get a lot of attention, uh, a lot of attention. And I think as that matter becomes public, which it really hasn't become, and which it would during a debate, my, my feeling is that there might be some persuasive uh, argument about that. Mr. Garst, there will be four hours of debate counting the hour on the rule. Right, that's true. So perhaps, uh, perhaps. Four hours for, you know, something of the magnitude we're talking about uh, seems... Uh, Rather slender, but but we haven't really talked about this deficit tr trust fund idea. Uh, you know, it's been in the newspaper, and the president's proposed one thing. We've had testimony up here. Uh, I don't know where else the testimony is, but these are things that matter. Uh, sure, we're all going to go home and uh, be able to explain things one way or the other, and we'll do our best. It seems to me we'd be able to do a whole lot better job if we knew what we were talking about. And I think we've got a better chance of knowing what we're talking about, and the other members who haven't had the benefit of this long, wonderful, informative day here uh, to go home and do their job better. So I, I think Mr. Mr. Solomon is on the right track. Well, if the reclaiming my Thank time, let me, let me just point out, uh, you know, what happened back in 1986 when we enacted with a very short debate, debate time, uh, what was it called? It was the uh, Tax Simplification Act of 1986. And it turned out to be an act that turned this country into a recession. And we limited the debate. Nobody really knew what was in that bill. I voted for it because it eliminated uh, tax brackets, and uh, that's one of the things I came here uh, for and pledged to fight for. And lo and behold, it, 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 it repealed passive loss through the real estate industry throughout America into a recession. Well, gentlemen, you. I'd be glad to. This was, uh, if I recall correctly, this was Ronald Reagan's bill that, sure uh, that you were describing. Uh, was uh, the president's bill, and, uh, and I voted against it. And uh, I think the president was wrong, and uh, I believe that uh, history has borne that out, that uh, President Reagan made a mistake in proposing this legislation. Well, it wasn't, uh, wasn't President Reagan. Uh, it was a compromise that President Reagan agreed to. It was a lot like the 1990 uh, uh, tax, uh, or, uh, the uh, Spending Reduction Act bill, in which uh, President Bush, uh, in order to reach a compromise, finally had to uh, renege on his promise of no new taxes. Uh, that certainly was not uh, promoted by President Bush. It was promoted by this Congress. And uh, fortunately, he had the sense to uh, at least fight for some real spending reduction control in that bill, uh, even though I voted against it because it wasn't strong enough. But uh, uh, be that as it may, we're about to do the same thing here. And there's nothing worse than, than passing a bill and then having the American people find out what is in it, you know, six months or a year later. That's a shame to treat the American people that way, and that's the way they're going to be treated with a simple little two hours of debate on this bill. Be four hours altogether, Mr. Well, Solomon. I'm reading here, it says two hours of general debate. That is where you lay out legislative intent, Mr. Chairman. You've been around here for 28 years. You know better than I do. That's where you establish general debate. I move my, my motion. But you oh, also the have a, you uh, also the establish it in the rule when you're de 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 debating the rule. Would the, would the gentleman yield just one moment before we go? You're my friend. I'd be glad to yield to you. You know, to say that this matter is just going to be debated for a couple of hours, I think, is, uh, is misleading. Uh, you know, you're going to have four hours of debate. You're going to have an hour on the rule. You're going to have an hour on the Kasich uh, sure. Amendment. You're going to have two hours of general debate. So that's four hours that you're going to have to, to debate. But I think even more important than that, that uh, we spent, I don't, I've forgotten how many hours on the floor on the budget resolution, uh, five or six hours uh, plus the rule. Uh, and it was debated uh, thoroughly. Uh, and most of this uh, is basically the same thing we, we passed in the budget. We have had all of these matters before committees, and uh, we've had hearings, and the process has come along. And to say that we only have a couple hours, I think, is, is kind of misleading to the American people. Well, I will just say this. Uh, I hope uh, C-SPAN uh, at least uh, breaks this up. This, this has been a 17-hour hearing. 
uh, coming uh, to the end of 17 hours, and perhaps C-SPAN will break it up into four-hour sections and show it several times to the American people, and that's about the only way they're going to find out what's in here is to see what happened during this hearing. And I thank the I, gentleman for his time, and I move my resolution. I just want to remind the people that this is on, on the motion to recommit uh, you know, with, with or without instruction. Question comes from the gentleman. It is to it is to strike the uh, five, five words, words, which right. may not include instructions. That's which right. Give us the right to offer instructions. Right. That would be very nice. Okay. Question comes from the motion. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Yeah. No. The noes appear to have it. No further comment, Mr. Chairman. It's up to them. They have to call for it. Hmm? Oh, oh, recorded vote on my motion. Yeah. Okay, let's have a recorded vote on his motion. Mr. Jack? No. Mr. Bielens? No. Mr. Frost? No. Mr. Bonner? No. Mr. Bonner? No. Mr. Hoffman? No. Mr. Wheat? No. Mr. Gordon? No. Ms. Slaughter? No. Mr. Solomon? The gag is complete. Aye. Mr. Quillen? Mr. Dryer? Aye. Mr. Goss? Aye. Mr. Chen? No. Three members haven't voted the affirmative. Uh, eight in the negative, the motion of the gentleman from New York is not adopted. Question now. Question now comes on the uh, motion of the gentleman from uh, South Carolina. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. The ayes appear to have it. The motion's adopted. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Slaughter? Aye. Mr. Solomon? No. Mr. Quillen? Mr. Dry? No. Mr. Gold? No. Mr. Chairman? Aye. This matter, eight members haven't voted in the affirmative, three in the negative. The motion the gentleman from South Carolina has adopted. The rule will be carried by the gentleman from South Carolina for the majority. And uh, I will carry for the minority. The gentleman Mr. from New York, Mr. Solomon, will carry for the minority. <laughs> We don't, we don't have any plans Not this morning, I hope. We need to adjourn right now. We need to keep one member here to stay in the chair while you fall. Okay. Well, why don't I... Seven I'll stand to turn. Ready, stand to adjourn. We need, we need to ask one person to stay until we fire. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Sonny. This programming note to be with us later this morning at 8 o'clock when we'll open up the phone lines for a call-in program with Roger Altman, President Clinton's Assistant Treasury Secretary. He'll talk with us about the President's budget plan. And 30 minutes later, we'll reopen the phone lines for a special two-and-a-half-hour preview of the day's House session and its scheduled debate of the Clinton budget and economic plan. You'll hear from both Democrat and Republican members on the Hill and learn about their strategies for Thursday's debate. And you'll meet two reporters who've been covering the story, Rick Dunham of Business Week and William Welsh of USA Today. And finally, at 11 o'clock this morning, we'll take you to the floor of the United States House of Representatives for live gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage of the day's session. And that's a brief look at our upcoming schedule here on C-SPAN. The most powerful court in the land 
the Supreme Court of the United States. Learn more about this American institution with justice for all.